So this morning I posted a community post and I asked what you would want to see next. Uh, majority of this was RetroBat, but just behind it we have RetroArch. So today I'm going to be doing you a setup guide for PS1 or PSX or PlayStation 1 or OG PlayStation on RetroArch. So I'm going to show you the best settings for graphics, video settings, also go through file extensions with you in how to download a core and also most importantly how to import your games into RetroArch. So check this one out. <laughs> Okay, first things first, if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, hit notifications and also subscribe so you can get up-to-date content as I release it on my channel. So we're talking about PSX, PS1, PlayStation 1, OG PlayStation today for RetroArch. So we're going to be using a very cool core named Swan Station. And Swan Station is much like Duck Station, the top, same type of thing. So it's a very good core. So what we're going to do first is go into RetroArch and actually download this core. So if you're new to RetroArch and you find it confusing, uh, the way to download cores and cores are kind of like emulators uh, which work on RetroArch. We need to go to Online Updater and from here, Core Downloader. And this fetches the core list and this is everything that RetroArch supports. So this is going to be under PlayStation. Everything's in alphabetical order. And under Sony PlayStation, we can see several different cores. So we got Beetle and we got PCSX Rearms, but the one I'm doing today is Swan Station. And you'll notice there's a hashtag just there. So that means that it's been downloaded already on my computer and installed. So you won't see this if this is your first attempt. All you need to do is just download it and it installs itself. It's that simple. So next thing we need to do is let's just back out of RetroWatch, but I always recommend going to configuration file and save new configuration. So once you've done that, let's quit out of RetroWatch and we got some files here. And these are the files you're going to need for RetroArch and specifically Swan Station. So we got BOS files for Japanese, European and US PlayStation consoles. So you can extract these from your console with the right software and people like myself, we enjoy doing this. It's a bit of a geeky thrill. So what we're going to do with these files is if we right click on the RetroArch shortcut and go to open file location, if you scroll upwards, you're going to find a folder called system. And if you go into system, this is where these files are going to go. So I'm going to just drag and drop these files inside of this RetroArch system folder. So next thing we're going to want to do now is head back into RetroArch. And this time around, what I'm going to do is just load content and I'm going to test if my PlayStation games are working before I actually import them. So they're on my desktop and if your game's on your desktop, it's going to be under Users. And whatever your computer name is called, mine's Jamie. And then from here, you can see Desktop. And my games for PlayStation are in my games folder. So select that one. And I've got two here. So we got Reloaded and Ridge Racer. So I'm going to just check out Ridge Racer first. And this is .bin and .q. So RetroArch One Station, it supports several different file extensions. And like I said, mine are in .bin and .q format. So what I'm going to do is just actually select the .q because the .q actually boots up the game. So if I just press enter on my keyboard for this, and here is a list of suggested cores. So randomly, RetroArch is suggesting Final Burn Neo, which is a Neo Geo core. But I want to be using that Sony PlayStation Swan Station. So if I just go down there and hit on Swan Station, it's now going to boot up.
So as we can see, very pixelated and very typical of PlayStation of that era for a two-bit games rather in that era. So I've just exited that game using my PS button on my PlayStation 3 6-axis controller, and that's brought us into the quick menu. So what I'm going to do now is go to close content, and that's going to relaunch RetroArch, and obviously the game is no longer playing. So this time I'm going to import my games. So import content. And what we're going to do next is just go to scan directory and C drive. And we need to locate those games again. So as we know, they are on my desktop. So it's going to be under users, Jamie, desktop and games. And now I need to scan this directory. And that's going to take a little while for some cases. If you've got more games, obviously that's going to take a little bit more time. So scan directory is now finished and we can back out. And if you come back straight back to the main menu and scroll down, you should now be able to see your PlayStation games. Here we go. So PlayStation has actually got a PS1 controller just there. And we've got both games here. So what I'm going to do next is just open up Ridge Racer and I'm going to mess around with some video settings so we can really make this look amazing. So what I'm going to do actually is set core association first. Uh, so every time you boot up a PlayStation game, it can boot up with your selected core. So I'm going to go to Swan Station, and now that core is set. So any other PlayStation that I boot up will automatically select Swan Station. And whilst I'm here, I can also download some thumbnails. Check this out. And there we go. And I'm also going to do this with Reloaded. So set core association. I'm also going to set this one to Swan Station. And I'm also going to download some thumbnails. And there we go. So let's open up Ridge Racer and mess around with some settings. Okay, so I'm going to just exit that and go into the quick menu. And so obviously this is going to be in a 4x3 default image. Uh, you know, PlayStation so old nowadays. The Spice Girls was at number one for Christmas when this was around. So we're going to just back out of here. And what we can do is go to settings. And if I just go to quick menu from here, we got options to save and load states. So Swan Station will save your games and load games, just like a real PlayStation. But if there's a time when you do want to save and there isn't a checkpoint in your game or whatever, it's literally just a case of selecting a state slot. And there's a lot of slots here. And I'm going to just go to auto, so slot zero. And then we just simply save state. Three, two, one, go! So if I now go back into the quick menu and go to load state. Three, two, one, go! Wow, what a start! So that's the load and save states covered. And what I'm going to do next is just tell you about disk control. So say, for example, you're playing a game like Metal Gear Solid, which has a few discs, or a Final Fantasy game, uh, 7, 8, or 9, they've all got around four discs each. What you need to do when it asks for disc 2 is just come into the disc control menu, eject the disc, and then you go to load new disc, and then simply press on the dot Q for that second disc. And then at that point, you'll see an index list come up. So if you need to go back to disc 1, blah, 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 that's how you do it. Very simple stuff. Core options. And Swan Station has got something called enhancement settings. And this is where we can really make these games look awesome. So firstly, I'm going to go to internal resolution scale. And as we can see, this goes way beyond 4K resolution. So I'm going to bump this up to 4K. And just be mindful that although PS1 games aren't that wearing on hardware, it might struggle for some lower end PCs. And if we go to multi-sample and analyzing, again, you can bump this right up to 32 times. Some games might be laggy, some might show visual strange artifacts, but let's try this one out. And we've also got true color rendering. It's very good if this works, but as it warns you, it may break rendering in some games. So let's bump this up to on. 
and scroll down a bit further down and you've got texture filtering by default this is on nearest neighbor just experiment with this and you know some of these filters just here looks better than others on certain games so i'm going to go with bilinear and I'm going to be putting this into 16 by 9 ratio. So what I'm going to do is just put the widescreen hack on this. And if I back out and go to display settings, core provided aspect ratio, like I said, I'm going to put this one on 16 by 9, which is like a widescreen image. And what I recommend you do again is just save your settings. So save new configuration, main menu. Quick menu, resume. And that's going to restart Retro Watch because we've got a lot of settings there to apply. see that's looking really stunning so it's just a case of experimenting and the main ones to look at is internal resolution scale and multi-sample analyzing so just be mindful that if you boost these up and your games lag then just simply go back into these menus and just turn them down so that's it for my retro arch and ps1 or psx setup guide today like i said at the start of the video if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today just hit notifications and subscribe it gets you the latest content as i release it and i also cover different platforms such as retrobat launchbox Batacera and many different standalone emulator guides too and also be sure to check me out on social media I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok and if there's a particular type of video you want if you're confused with something or you're stuck with something join my membership option and select next level and I will get around to investigating that for you and get you a video so until next time stay retro